Hi guys, welcome to my channel Lush Gardener. I hope you guys are fine and are safe. So in today's video, we are going to be talking about some varieties of uh, succulents that naturally grow around the world. Now I will be covering only the succulents that I am aware about. I won't be giving any uh, information based on assumption. Only the information that I have researched and read on the internet is uh, the type of varieties that I will be uh, showcasing in this uh, video. Now guys, I will be only talking about succulents that tend to naturally grow uh, around the world. I'm not going to be talking about hybrids uh, because hybrids are a man-made. Uh, they have been created in farms or in nurseries. Uh, uh, they are created uh, with uh, the cross-pollination method. Those are not natural varieties of succulents, so you won't find them or they do not have a native uh, region where they tend to grow because they are man-made. For example, I have my Echeveria florence, Lawi, which is a hybrid succulent. I have an Echeveria champagne, which again is a hybrid, so they do not have a natural environment or they do not have a native environment or a region where they tend to grow. Whereas I have my Echeveria chewinensis, which is a natural variety of an Echeveria, which tends to grow in the uh, region in Mexico uh, probably uh, the name itself is one of the region in Mexico where this plant tends to grow and that's how this succulent tends to get its name now another important thing as well uh, all the succulents uh, are from very different landscapes from very different regions or from very different uh, continents and uh, each of the succulent has a very unique color it has a very unique shape texture uh, the type of uh, leaf structure everything uh, this is all uh, determined by the origin like for example some succulents might be very green in color some succulents might be very brightly colored the natural ones uh, the hybrids of course are going to be very attractive because that's the reason why they are made uh, so that people can enjoy their beauty so that is uh, how they tend to um, genetically modify it or they try to cross pollinate it and make it into a very beautiful colored succulent and that's what the ones that we tend to buy uh, a lot of times the natural varieties of succulents are not very attractive uh, but they're not very bad as well I mean uh, they would have a very natural color to it but the man-made hybrids they are going to be very colorful because that's the whole intention to make them very beautiful so that uh, they can please the eye so let's start with the first succulent and that is our all-time favorite which is an aloe now uh, there are different varieties of aloe like there are thousands of varieties of aloe uh, the one that we always know or the famous one is the aloe vera uh, it's known for its uh, gel that is present inside the leaves it is also a type of succulent the gel is basically used for uh, uh, medicines it's used for cosmetics uh, uh, you know there are a lot of medicinal values of the gel that is present inside uh, the aloe now this is only one variety but there are a lot of varieties and now there are a lot of uh, new hybrids that are also coming up but if you are going to talk about the uh, natural aloes that tend to grow around the world you will tend to find aloes growing in wild especially uh, they are native to uh, Africa Madagascar and the Arabian Peninsula which is very similar to the tropical semi-tropical and arid climates so like they are kind of distributed in every west you will find them in tropical climates as well you will find them in subtropical climates as well as you will also find them in arid conditions because as I said they do tend to store water in the form of gel in their leaves so uh, they can sustain uh, for a longer period of time without water they are drought tolerant as well and uh, now because aloes are becoming very uh, uh, famous of late so there are a lot of new hybrids that are coming up in the market but uh, they are a lot of aloes that are native to these uh, regions now the next succulent on the list are ioniums now ioniums have very thin leaves uh, now, ideally it is said that uh, they store more water in their stem rather than their leaves because their leaves are very thin now i'm not a very big fan of ioniums this is only one gift that i happen to receive in the combo and this is another ionium uh, probably this is ionium a uh, pinwheel but i'm not very sure uh, but I'm not a very big fan of ioniums, but uh, nevertheless, they are absolutely beautiful uh, succulents. Now, uh, the dormancy of ioniums, they tend to go dormant during the warmer months and uh, the winter is their active growing period. So during winters, you can see my ionium has started to open up a lot. Uh, so winter is their growing period and uh, 
as i said they do not store much water in their leaves they store a lot of water in their stem now these uh, tend to do quite well in coastal areas because they are native to the canary islands now i'm not very sure because i'm not from a uh, from a coastal area but if you are from a coastal environment if you are from a coastal area please do let me know how your ionians tend to do because they prefer to uh, do quite well in the uh, coastal areas now again not a lot of varieties again this variety is distributed one as i said they are native to the canary islands whereas some of the ionians they are scattered uh in and around central africa that tends to offer kind of similar environment to them uh, so probably if the environment is a little bit humid they might do quite well again i'm not very sure because i'm not from a coastal environment so if any one of you are from coastal environment and if you have a good success with ioniums please do let me know thankfully i don't have a lot of ioniums because as i said my environment is little bit dry so whatever ioniums i have they do quite they are doing quite well during summers i have noticed that uh, my ionium tends to drop majority of the leaves leaving only the crown area probably uh, because of the environment so again it depends because uh, they are again scattered in and around central africa as well as they are native to the canary islands uh, a lot of these succulents they tend to grow in uh, different regions but wherein they have this uh, very similar kind of environment so this is ionium now the next on the list are uh, crassulas or the jade plants now a lot of people tend to grow their crassulas indoor as well near the window sill where it gets a good amount of indirect bright light but to be honest if you are going to keep them out in uh, morning direct sunlight they are going to do excellent because uh, these uh, uh, plants these succulents they come from uh, south africa uh, they are native to south africa and now because they are becoming so popular over the period of time uh, people have started uh, cultivating them in different environments as well and uh, now they have been uh, distributed everywhere uh, you might find it in europe as well you might find it in america as well and in australia so they are uh, starting to uh, get very popular and hence a lot of uh, sellers and a lot of uh, people who create hybrids or uh, a lot of people who uh, grow them in nurseries have started uh, moving them in different parts of the country now because uh, they have been acclimated and they have been made comfortable in the new environments they have also started to thrive uh, in different environments as well but originally they are from or uh, they are native to uh, south africa uh, so they love to be uh, they love uh, or they thrive in outdoor conditions uh, more than indoor conditions but over the period of time uh, by making them comfortable indoor as well they are very popular you might have seen a lot of people tend to grow them at the window sill as well uh, the crassula owata crassula owata is a natural variety of uh, crassula and uh, we have our uh, red pagoda and then we have our uh, crassula campfire which are again the natural varieties found in south africa Now the next on the list are echeverias one of my favorite uh, genus of succulent i would say almost uh, a lot of my uh, collection is based on echeverias because i really love uh, echeverias and they are uh, very commonly found uh, but they can also be quite challenging to grow uh, especially if you do not have the same kind of environment now they are native to uh, mexico they are native to the central america so they prefer a environment that is dry and slightly warm uh, they will thrive in such a environment so if you can replicate an environment like that they will do quite well now my environment in general is uh, quite dry it's slightly warm so all of my varieties tend to do quite well now please don't go according to these varieties because these varieties of my echeverias are uh, hybrids i do not have much natural varieties of succulents apart from echeveria chuaiinensis which is a natural variety but majority i would say almost 96 97% of the echeveria collection that i have are all hybrids so this is just an example because i do not have any natural varieties to show to you but uh, if you are able to replicate an environment which is dry and slightly warm for your echeverias they will do excellent in that kind of environment so you can see my echeverias are doing excellent because i have somewhat uh, typical similar environment what they tend to grow in their uh, native
The next one on the list are uh, Kalanchoes. Now, Kalanchoes uh, belong to or are native to tropical kind of an uh, region. Uh, they are mostly found in Africa, Asia, Madagascar. Uh, they do quite well. They do not need a lot of care. Uh, basically, a typical tropical environment would work out really well for them. In fact, in uh, most of uh, the countries or in most of the regions, these are considered as weed, including myself because I have so many Kalanchoes. Uh, I do not even take care of them. You can see they are in a very bad condition. Uh, even if I tend to repot them you can see uh, this was the recent one that I had done the cutting and you can see how well it has grown so in a lot of places they are considered as weed whereas in some places they are considered as a very popular house plants and are being sold at a very high rate so again it's a very very easy to grow you can easily propagate it via leaf propagation stem cutting uh, they tend to kind of get invasive after a point of time uh, these were just that I was about to trash but I then just left it I have to do a lot of cutting uh, these I had done a recent cutting you can see there's still a lot of dry stem uh, so I had done a recent cutting and this is all the new growth that is coming up so I had done the cutting and I had put the uh, stem cuttings in this spot and you can see they are doing quite well so they are quite invasive but again in some places they are also quite expensive to be purchased and uh, the next one on the list are uh, the Sinisios, uh, the Sinisio uh, variety. Uh, there are a lot of them, uh, like the blue chopsticks, you have your string of pearls, string of bananas. Uh, these are all from the Sinisio family. Uh, now mine is in a very bad condition because I forgot to water it completely. Uh, this is kept in another uh, side of the terrace and I completely forgot to water it. I'm going to do it after this. You can see a lot of wrinkles uh, and it was completely underwatered. Uh, but as soon as I water it, uh, it will uh get plumped up but these tend to grow upright uh different varieties uh, some varieties tend to uh, grow in a hanging planter like the ones like string of pearls uh string of tears etc so they tend to grow in hanging planters some tend to grow upright they tend to grow as a ground cover a good ground cover now some of them are very picky especially like string of pearls uh, very picky growers uh, and a lot of people have a difficult time growing them so they basically are native to all the five regions in the mediterranean uh, uh, the alp like area uh, so they like uh, shaded area and they like uh, temperate uh, weather so that's why uh, most probably the string of pearls in my location tend to do quite well uh, in indirect bright light and for some people they do well in morning direct sunlight for me the string of pearls never worked in uh, you know direct sunlight so because in nature as well they tend to grow in uh, a shaded area most probably and that's why they do well in indirect bright light so this was uh, Senecio uh, variety again there are some hybrids as well and there are a lot of natural varieties now the next one on the list are sedums. Now again, just like any other succulents, they are also distributed in different regions. Some are native to Africa and South America, whereas some are uh, native to Central Asia like Japan and they also tend to thrive in the Himalayan mountains. So different varieties, again, uh, because they are distributed in different regions, uh, they would also have uh, the appearance, the color, uh, the texture of the leaves, uh, the shape of the leaves will also change uh, depending upon where they are found. Now, I'm not very sure uh, individually which varieties are found in which region, but uh, they are distributed in these uh, regions like uh, Central Asia, uh, some parts of Africa and South America. So now because they are from different environments, uh, from different regions so of course their appearance is going to change some are going to be trailing some are going to be ground cover their colors their shape of the leaves everything change according to the region so the last one on the list are sempervivums the ones that i don't keep i wish i knew about them earlier otherwise i would have never purchased them because initially i had no clue about uh, their environment now basically sempervivums uh, belong or are native to the mountain areas of the mediterranean and central and southern europe where it is very very cold the soil is very dry mostly uh, their soil or i would say uh, their terrain is very rocky so they basically tend to grow in a very rocky area and as per a lot of research and articles uh, they say that sempervivums can even handle temperatures that can go below minus 20 degrees fahrenheit so you can imagine 
Uh, I wish I knew about this earlier because uh, definitely my environment is not appropriate for them. It is not comfortable for them because I belong to a tropical environment. Uh, my temperatures during winters will not even uh, go below uh, 17 degrees Celsius or even uh, let's say 15 degrees Celsius. That will never happen in my city. No wonder uh, I was never able to grow them. But somehow I had managed to grow them during the winters. But as soon as the summers used to come, uh, either they used to get dried because if I don't water them or if I tend to water them, they used to get rotted. So now I know that uh, it was nothing related uh, with me taking care of them. Uh, it was related with the environment. The environment was not suitable for them. So that's why it is very important that uh, we do a little bit of research. We try to understand a plant before getting it. Always remember, before you buy a plant, always do a little bit of research, especially uh, the type of environment and what are the requirements. Otherwise, uh, you will end up uh, losing the plant. No matter how much of care you are going to give for that particular plant, if the plant is not suitable for that particular environment, it is not going to work out. So that's why it's very important to understand where your succulents are uh, coming from, what is their native. So that uh, once you know that uh, what is the environment that they tend to grow in, then you can probably provide them with that kind of environment. And that's when the succulent will start to uh, thrive and start to grow. Otherwise, if the environment is not suitable for them, no matter what you do, uh, the succulent is going to have issues. And uh, a lot of times uh, we just randomly purchase plants. We just randomly buy uh, succulents without even understanding uh, what their native is. So I'm sure uh, by this video you might have got a, not a complete idea but probably a little bit of uh, idea of where the succulents come from and what are the type of uh, environment they belong to. So on that note, we come to the end of this video. I didn't even realize that this is uh, one of the longest video that I've made uh, on my channel. Uh, I hope that this video was helpful to you. If it was, please hit the like button. If you're new to my channel, then please consider subscribing to it. Until then, take care, stay safe and keep propagating.